A few days ago, a brand new Banjo-Kazooie glitch was discovered by TSR Stormed and Trep. This glitch essentially lets you play the game while the game is paused. You can move around, but you can control the pause menu at the same time. At first glance, this glitch doesn't look too useful, but since then, me and a few other community members have looked into applications and busted this game wide open. In this video, we're going to see how this glitch can lead to breaking object animations, just like Banjo's flying animation here. Breaking cutscenes to show us this iconic T-Pose Klungo. Breaking cutscenes even more to warp around the game. Getting into some levels without opening them. And breaking the note cap to get way more notes than ever intended in the game. Today we're going to see how all of this works. This is the pause overlap glitch explained. So let's talk about how this glitch works. The first thing that I need to mention is that it's an Xbox exclusive glitch. So Banjo-Kazooie was released on N64 originally and then later on on Xbox as a remaster. Uh, this glitch only works on that Xbox version because it relies on the Xbox menu. So the Xbox version has a big speedrun community around it as well as N64 and there's a lot of crossover between those communities. If you haven't checked out Xbox speedruns, I'd recommend doing so because they can have some different routes, especially with note saving and another glitch called DDA. We're going to see the glitch here and it involves the Xbox menu and the leaky cutscene. So we'll poop eggs into leaky and then we're going to hit the Xbox menu as the cutscene's going on. Whenever you hit the Xbox menu, it causes the game to pause and that causes it to pause during this cutscene. And because the room changes, it allows Banjo to gain control again. And that's essentially how to do the glitch. So TSR found this version of the glitch and Trep found another version which uses the Gobi's Valley water draining cutscene. And that's why I mentioned both their names in discovering this glitch. Now I will mention, it's pretty likely that there are other spots to do this pause glitch in the game. It just so happens the two we know of are those water draining cutscenes in Gobies and TTC. So if you're interested in looking into this glitch, I'd encourage you to try and find some other spots to do it. And if you're really interested in this stuff, I have about 17 hours worth of exploration highlighted on my Twitch channel. It's been a really long process finding all the stuff with this glitch and there's a lot of dead ends that I won't show in this video, but it's all there if you do want to see it. A big part of the difficulty in this glitch is the fact that it's exclusive to Xbox. Normally with glitches on the N64 version we can fire up the emulator along with save states and Lewis strips to help us do all the testing, but with Xbox we actually have to play the game on a console and a TV. That means that if I need to get up to a particular point of the game, I actually had to get up to that point of the game to do the testing. And if I had a one-time event like a cauldron cutscene, I could only try that one time on the file before I had to try again later. So a big thanks to uh, Terp who found a method to stop the game from saving, which was really quick. Uh, that helped with testing a lot because obviously you could go into the file, stop it from saving, do what you need to do and then retry it again later. The first application we'll look at today is Object Corruption. Now this didn't happen to me, this happened to TrepGD who was one of the people who helped find this glitch. And as you can see in this footage, the snowman is copying Banjo's moves. So it's taken on some of the properties of Banjo and you can make a copy pretty much whatever you do. This has a different effect for different people. I've seen some people come into Frazizi Peak and have the Witch Switch copy them. I've also seen uh, myself go towards Waz's cave and have Banjo himself bug out. So there's varying effects. I've also seen people have it happen with Nipper and Treasure Trove Cove. So there are different things that can happen in different levels. Now this object corruption is really exciting because it looks related to another Xbox corruption glitch that we already know about. If you keep signing in and out, the whole game will go into this corrupted state. For example, this room here. And most objects will bend over like this, including Door of Grunty there. Now Door of Grunty we don't normally have a skip for, except for if we use this glitch to get past it. Now you might be wondering why don't we use corruption in speedruns, and the reason is quite often corruption will crash the game, and it will really often crash in Furnace Fun. 
So while I got past Dora Grunty here, you actually can't use it to get past because you need to go through Furnace Fun first, and well, you can't get through Furnace Fun with Corruption active. But if we can use this pause menu storage as like a weaker version of Corruption, we might be able to do something like this. Although nobody has been able to corrupt Dora Grunty with it yet, unfortunately. So let's now talk about what you can do with this pause menu. So view totals won't do anything interesting. It brings you to a blank screen. The only way to get out of that is unpause. Uh, help and options doesn't do much either, but it's a really good menu to sit in while you're doing this glitch because the only button that will get you out of it is the B button and you barely ever use that in the game. Leaderboard shows the leaderboards as per normal and achievements will basically pull up an Xbox menu, pulling you out of the glitch. So never hit achievements. The only other interesting thing is exit game, and that's really interesting as we'll see later on. The first application we're going to see of exit game though is messing up some cutscenes. Let's have a look. So we've got a legitimate game over here, and I'm also going to hit exit game during this cutscene to start the game over cutscene. Klungo goes into his lovely t pose there, and as we skip through this cutscene a bit more, there's some more glitchy parts to it. So if we go a bit further through, you'll see the camera's totally not on Grunty at all, and not on 2D either. Pretty weird stuff. This doesn't have too much of a use, but it is kind of a funny application of the glitch. Depending when you hit exit game, you might get different effects for this cutscene. If you do wait till this intro sequence to hit exit game, you're going to get 2D just in a T-pose for basically the whole thing. And you can't escape this cutscene until you hit the button to uh, end it pretty much. Let's have a look at what that looks like. You're going to hit exit game just there, and 2 ds in a T-pose there. Pretty weird stuff, but not super useful. In this next part of the video, we're going to talk about cutscene warping. And this is where the game is going to get really, really broken. So before we launch into it, I need to talk about how cutscenes work in this game. And the first thing we'll talk about is cauldrons. Cauldrons come in pairs and they warp you across the layer. And once you get the second one in a pair of cauldrons, you get a little cutscene playing. It shows you where the other cauldron in the pair was. And it says, hey, you can now warp between us two. Cool stuff. And it's been known for a really long time that if you jump into the cauldron, Banjo will spawn into the cutscene. So the cutscene will normally look like this without Banjo there at all. Banjo is not spawned into the map. But if you jump into the cauldron, Banjo will be spawned into the map. Let's have a look. There we go. Now you can try and move around all you want, but you're not gaining control of Banjo in that cutscene. Now this is often seen in speedruns, and then in the speedrun they'll jump into the cauldron, because, I mean, that's why they're at the cauldron, to do warping. And then they'll go through it and the run will continue on as normal, nothing weird will happen. The only thing that's kind of weird is the game time will be slightly higher, because when you have Banjo in the cutscene, the game time ticks up. Whereas when Banjo is not in the game, uh, not in the cutscene, it doesn't tick up. Uh, but what's not so commonly known is that this is a state that you can keep Banjo in. So I'm going to jump into the cauldron here and Banjo will go in, he'll be in the cutscene. And most of the time you'll just jump into the cauldron after this. But, jumping into the cauldron actually cancels this state. If instead you fly out of the cauldron, Banjo is now in this state where he's going to be spawned into cutscenes all the time. And it's a pretty weird state to be in, you'll never see it in the speedrun because they always jump into the cauldron afterwards, but it's pretty cool to see. One thing that you can do with this immediately is open a level, and if we look at this level opening cutscene, Banjo will be standing in front of Clanker's cabin. Really weird to see this, but there it is. For reference, the normal cutscene would look something like this. You'd finish the puzzle, and Banjo would not be standing in front of Clankers. He wouldn't be spawned on the map at all. There we go. Now, although this cauldron cutscene stuff is cool, it's not really useful on its own. But when combined with the pause glitch, we're going to get something really powerful. I mentioned before that there's the exit game option, and what that does is it, it does a fade out to the game over cutscene. So Grunty's face will fade into the middle of the screen, and then it'll fade out to game over. But it turns out that if Banjo's movement is locked and you start that Grunty face fade out, you're actually going to unlock Banjo's movement and gain control of him again. You don't get full control, you can only use the joystick, so no jumping or attacks or anything, but it does give you that little bit of control. What we're going to see here is the first example. Banjo is going to hit the witch switch, which would normally completely lock him and play the witch switch cutscene. Instead of that, we're going to hit exit game and see the fade out. Let's have a look. We hit, are we sure? We get Grunty's face fade out, and Banjo just runs off and goes through the door. 
So that's really cool. You get control during the cutscene and then rather than watching that witch switch cutscene, we just go through the door. Really weird stuff. So although this glitch is Xbox exclusive, a huge thanks to Isotage who actually made this work on N64 emulator with some hacks because it's made testing a lot easier. I'm just going to demonstrate here what this looks like on the Cauldron cutscene. So with that Clanker's Witch switch before, we saw Banjo moved in the room that he came from when triggering the cutscene. But if you get a game over, then you can move in the room that you're going to. So I'll hit game over here, and then Banjo is going to gain movement and start walking around in that cutscene. Absolutely crazy stuff. Turns out when you come back to the original room, the screen's completely blanked out. So it's a bit awkward if you don't get into a door or something in the other room. One small thing to mention about this is Banjo doesn't get movement until the cutscene would have normally ended. So it's best to hit your game over just as the cutscene is coming towards a close. Now, though I've hacked it in here, normally you'd be doing this with the pause menu on the Xbox using that pause glitch we've seen before. Now, what we're about to see is the first really useful thing that I found with this pause glitch. Uh, we're at the Clanker's Cabin puzzle and we're going to spawn Banjo into that cutscene, hit game over, gain control, and see if we can walk Banjo into Clanker's Cabin. Let's have a look. I'm going to leave the original sound on here so you can hear the authentic reaction to this glitch being found. So we're going to step onto the podium here and line up the exit game. Here we go. Now, I'm very nervous doing this because if I mess this up I have to play the whole game file again up to this point. Let's hit it and see what happens. Keep your eye on the very bottom of the camera, you might see Banjo moving soon. Yes! Banjo's broken. Banjo is broken. <laughs> So this glitch is really cool. It saves you a whole bunch of navigation through the lair. You go straight from Clanker's Cabin puzzle into Clanker's Cabin itself. It also saves you raising up the two pipes you need to walk into Clanker's. Now, realistically, this glitch probably doesn't save time in a speed run on its own because you need to line up a couple things. You need to have jumped into a cauldron before. So Banjo's in that mode where he's spawning into those cutscenes, And you also need the pause glitch active from TTC. So this one probably doesn't save time, but it's cool that it's possible. And it was the very first demonstration we saw of this pause glitch in action to do cutscene warping. You know what's crazy? I reckon one I weird will, thing um, is that the Grunty's Lair like, music is still playing. Let's have a listen. Going in a loading zone first, but I'm pretty sure when I go back and like leave Clankers, it's gonna snap me back to the Clankers puzzle, like as part of that cutscene. What? Now it's playing the treasure train code. <laughs> Using basically the same method, I was able to warp into Click Clock Wood from this puzzle cutscene too. You have to really know where Banjo is on the camera because you can't see what he's doing, and then you have to hold the direction you think he's going to walk into to the door. You also have to hit that save and click right at the end of where you think the cutscene is, and if you overshoot it, you don't get it. Banjo is going to walk into Click Clock Wood here, and that skips us a whole lot of backtracking through the lair. Really cool stuff. Now, if you're familiar with Banjo speedruns, you would have seen Reverse Bee Adventure before. Well, I've got something even cooler for you here. Reverse Pumpkin Adventure. Now, this one, unfortunately, I did have to hack in on uh, BizHawk to get the timing right. The timing is really tight, but in theory, this will work on Xbox using the same method we saw before. Let's have a look. We complete the puzzle, and then we want to get a game over right as the cutscene's about to finish. And that's usually when the sign says Gobi's Valley. The pumpkin spawned in the cutscene because of that cauldron thing. Here we go, hit the game over, and we hold up to walk the pumpkin in Gobies. If we hit that timing right, pumpkin's gonna come straight into Gobies Valley, and now you have all of your pumpkin fun in Gobies Valley outside of the intended area. This is just some of the really cool stuff that you can do with this glitch, and I was glad this one worked out actually. Just don't fall in the water, whatever you do. Now I've shown you a lot of level puzzle cutscenes to make this work, but this does work up other cutscenes in the lair too. We're going to hit the switch here to spawn this puzzle podium in, and that'll spawn Banjo in the room. It spawns him next to that pipe with the water coming out of it, so if you kind of hold uppy lefty here, you'll get in that pipe during the cutscene. And then Banjo should appear out on the other side. Cool stuff. So that'll save a bit of backtracking in the lair as well. Just keep in mind you do have to set up each one of these with one of those pause glitches, so it's not worth it unless it saves a lot of time. 
Now it's really important to note here that there's two different types of glitches that are happening here. You've got the glitches where you're walking around in the destination of the cutscene, but the glitches also where you're walking around in where the cutscene starts from. So for example here, if I jump into the cauldron and get a game over in this cutscene, I'll see Banjo walking around in this target area near Frazizi Peak and everything. But if instead I uh, go outside the cauldron and get a game over here, I can see Banjo walking around in this area with the cauldron. And depending on which one you do, you're going to get different effects. So to see what I'm talking about, we're going to take a step back to this Clanker's Witch Witch cutscene that we saw before. You might have noticed that when I get the game over here, I actually have Banjo moving in the cutscene before it snaps to the room with the Jiggy in it. So that's this other type that I'm talking about. You'll see nothing really interesting happens. So I hit this and I go through the door. Um, if I didn't go through the door, then the cutscene would just start as per normal. And then we just fall out here and keep playing the level. Nothing too unusual is going on here. But something really interesting will happen if I go to the room where the Witch Witch cutscene was going to be. So let's skip ahead a bit and see what goes on. I'm going to travel back through the lair here. And then in a couple rooms time, I'm going to be getting to where that cutscene is. I'm going to go in there. Cutscene plays, and then I'm warped back to Clankers. So this is sort of warping in reverse back through the lair, and we'll see a few applications of it later on. This isn't as useful as that forward warping that I showed you before, but it's still worth knowing about. One thing that I will mention about this cutscene warping in reverse is that the game can only store one active cutscene at a time. So if I went and hit another witch switch, or like opened another level, uh, then it would cancel off this cutscene. I wouldn't get this warp back effect that I was talking about. We're now going to see our first huge application of this glitch, and it's Rusty Bucket Bay early. This is going to save 12 jiggies in a speedrun because it saves you from having to open up Rusty Bucket Bay. I'm going to play through it just once so that you can see, and then we'll talk through what's going on. And we just got Rusty Bucket Bay early. There we go. So let's look at what's happening with Rusty Bucket Bay early. This glitch is insanely complicated, so we're going to need this diagram to make any sense of it. Normally what happens with a cauldron cutscene is you'll trigger the cauldron that you want to trigger. In this case, it's this blue cauldron near Rusty Bucket Bay, and you'll already have that one near Frazizi Peak active. So that's already active, you triggered the last cauldron. Banjo and the camera both move over and have a look at that cauldron in the cutscene. Now Banjo may or may not spawn in the cutscene, depending on whether you have that cauldron glitch active that we saw before. And you can get that glitch by jumping into that first blue cauldron or having jumped into a cauldron beforehand. Either way, the cutscene plays, it stores Banjo's original coordinates, and then when the cutscene's done, it warps him back to those coordinates where he triggered that cauldron from. So it's all good. But it turns out that in the same room as this blue cauldron, there's also a pink cauldron sitting literally right underneath it. And the other half of that blue cauldron is near the treasure trove cove puzzle. And for the purposes of this glitch, we're going to have that cauldron active. So both are almost ready to make a pair and play that cutscene. We're going to uh, trigger the blue cauldron as per normal, or Banjo across. Uh, but as we saw before, Banjo spawns in this spot in the map. Whenever he spawns into this map during a cutscene, that's exactly where he's going to be. And we know we can gain control using this game over thing. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to gain control and walk Banjo over to hit the pink cauldron. So the cutscene plays normally, it stores the coordinates of the pink cauldron and attempts to play the cutscene showing you the other pink cauldron. And that cancels off the original stored coordinates. Now from this point on, the blue cauldron cutscene is still playing, so it attempts to do everything normally. It pulls the camera back to the Rusty Bucket Bay lobby and puts Banjo back on his stored coordinates. Only thing is, we've overwritten the stored coordinates, and he goes to the wrong spot. Where is that spot? It happens to be right behind the door to Rusty Bucket Bay, and you can swim straight in. So let's play this back and make sense of it. I'm going to hit game over and walk to the cauldron. 
You might have seen it trigger there. That stored the coordinates. Now it pulls Banjo back to the normal map, but due to this cutscene side effect we can't see what's happening. You have to play without seeing it for a while, but it's pretty easy to fall out of bounds and die. As soon as you die, the map will reload. There we go, we've just fallen out of bounds, the map reloads. And now you just flick the camera around and you can go straight into Rusty Bucket Bay. Now, I would love it if this saved more time than it did, uh, but there is actually another glitch to get into Rusty Bucket Bay, which we'll see now. So the other glitch to get Rusty Bucket Bay early has been known for a while and it's a huge part of any percent. It's called DDA and it stands for Demo Desync Adventure. You hold the camera stick in a particular direction and that'll desync the demo. If you press start six times as the screen is fading out, it'll skip past six of the intended demos and go straight to Rusty Bucket Bay. Just so it happens the demo's in the engine room and it's really easy to fall off. So as soon as the camera is a bit messed up and the demo desyncs, Banjo falls straight into the bottom of the engine room and dies, and that puts you in the demo file. A few cool things about this demo file, uh, you start off with 25 Mumbo tokens, which is really great, lets you turn into any transformation you want, and you start in Rusty Bucket Bay, which means that there's very minimal layer backtracking. You also start with all the moves, but you don't start with any notes or jiggies or anything like that. This isn't too important for the pause glitch itself, but it's important to mention because we'll see some speedrun routing later in this video, and that routing relies pretty heavily on DDA. So I need to talk about the different types of game over cutscenes you can get. Uh, when you start the game, if you hit save and quit, it will say game over and then zip you straight back to the file select screen. But when you enter the lair, you get this cutscene with Grunty and Tootie both in the beauty machines. And that sort of starts the storyline of, oh, you're trying to go and save Tootie. So once you see that cutscene, instead of the game over cutscene putting you just back to file select, it plays this cutscene of you basically losing the game and seeing uh, 2D get turned into this monster thing. So you really need the fade out to the game over cutscene for any of these warp glitches to work. So that means if you're trying to do something from the very start of the game, it won't work until you see this cutscene. Also, if you do DDA, uh, you get the normal game over cutscene, you don't get this cutscene. So if you want to do DDA and do this glitch at the same time, you have to go all the way back to the start of the layer and watch this cutscene before you can do anything useful with it. The other factor is, as soon as you beat Furnace Fun and save 2D, you stop getting the game over cutscene. So um, you need to not have Furnace Fun beaten on your file. But barely anyone has Furnace Fun beaten on their file because there's already an Park skip which helps you avoid that. If you're at all familiar with Banjo-Kazooie, this screen is going to look very wrong to you. I've got 105 notes in Mad Monster Mansion. So normally each level just has 100 notes in it, totaling 900 notes in the whole game because there's 9 levels. And as we can see, we got 5 extra notes. This is an application of the warping glitch and we're going to see what happens. So believe it or not, exceeding this note cap is related to stop and swap. Now, Stop and Swap was a cut feature from Banjo-Kazooie where basically you can find these six secret eggs and secret ice key and you are supposed to transfer it to Banjo-Tooie. So the eggs are still in Banjo-Kazooie, but by the time they got to Banjo-Tooie, they'd scrapped the concept due to some N64 hardware stuff. Now, you can still find these Stop and Swap codes online and enter them, and that unlocks the rooms where the eggs are. So, for example, if I finish entering this code in the Sandcastle, we get this little cutscene that plays, you can see that door is now open in Gobi's Valley, and if I went through that door, one of those eggs would be in there. So, pretty normal stuff. It's not really supposed to be known about in the game, but if you look into the game, you can find those codes out. Anyone can enter them and get the eggs. Once you get them once on a cartridge of Banjo-Kazooie, you can't get them again. So, you'll enter these codes once and that's basically it. Except on Xbox, if you do DDA, you can enter them multiple times. One of the stop and swap items is in the cellar in Mad Monster Mansion. And it's this one right here that's all boarded up and you can't break it no matter how hard you try. So you do have to enter that stop and swap code to break it and it will show you that little cutscene. Turns out that if you do the cauldron glitch, then Banjo is standing basically right here during that cutscene. So all you really need to do is walk slightly up these stairs and you'll head out the door of the cellar into the main area. And that's exactly what we're going to see. So here I've entered the code, and it's important to note that I've collected five notes in Treasure Trove Cove. That'll become important later. I hit the last letter and Bottles is talking to me here. Uh, Bottles takes a while to finish talking to you, so that's why I'm going to wait so long. 
but we're going to see that Mad Monster Mansion cutscene. I've hit a cauldron before and gone inside the cauldron, and that's put me in that state where Banjo will be spawning in cutscenes. Really important to set that bit up before doing any of these warp glitches. So we're going to hit exit game once the cutscene starts and that'll trigger a game over. I then walk Banjo up the stairs and we'll leave that little cellar room. The cutscene will start here, hit OK, Banjo will walk out. And we make it back out. Now, this basically is Mad Monster Mansion early, which is really cool. So again, that saves another 10 jiggies if you want. But the bit that's cooler about it is the game never really took me out of Treasure Trove Cove. So when I collect my first note in a little while, it's going to say 6 rather than 1 like it normally would. And that's because Banjo is still holding the 5 notes from Treasure Trove Cove. And if I get all 100 notes in this level, I'm going to end up with 105 notes because I already came in holding 5. So right now, if you looked at my note score totals, it would still say Treasure Trove Cove. I got 5 notes because that's sort of the last amount that I had in Treasure Trove Cove. But Banjo was holding those five notes into Mad Monster Mansion, so I'm eventually going to be able to reach a cap of the 105 notes that we saw before in here. So in theory, if you got all 100 notes in Treasure Trove Cove and brought them in here, you could end up with 200 notes. So that's exactly what I did here, and eventually I'll grab that 101st note, breaking the regular note score total that you could get in a world. It's kind of weird that notes work like this, because they changed how notes worked in between the Xbox and N64 versions. So on N64, you'll go into a level and you'll collect as many notes as you can, and if you die, all those notes will respawn and come back, and it just saves your best note score, so however many notes you got in the one playthrough of the level. Whereas in Xbox, it actually just saves whatever notes you get, and even if you die, you've still collected those notes. So I was honestly shocked that it worked like this, but it's obviously a holdover from the way it was programmed on N64. So essentially I'm leaving Treasure Trove Cove without clearing off the note score from Treasure Trove Cove. Uh, so you need sort of two parts to this. You need to warp out of a level, which we did from the stop and swap cutscene, and you need to warp into a different level, which we did from the stop and swap cutscene. So I end up with 105 in this demo, but you could definitely get up to 200. So this is the only way I know of of the glitch working, because there are ways to warp out of levels, and there are ways to warp into levels, but there's no way to do both out of A the same pause glitch, and B the same cutscene. Because as soon as you watch one cutscene, that takes priority and clears off any other cutscenes that you're doing. If there was a cutscene that showed you the inside of a level from the outside of a level, that could theoretically work. And I've looked at picture questions to try and do that, but I've had no success. So right now it relies on stop and swap codes, and that technically means that any speedruns using this note duping strategy are technically part of the any percent with cheats category, because stop and swap codes would be considered a cheat. That being said, any percent with cheats is the fastest way to beat the game, and now it's going to be a heck of a lot faster. Even though it's not the pure any percent speedrun that you might find on the main speedrun page, it's definitely worth checking out. Now after seeing that warp into MMM and duping notes in MMM, you might be wondering, can we go into any other levels with the other stop and swap cutscenes? Unfortunately, the answer is no. So just the way the cutscenes are laid out, we're not near any doors that we can easily walk out of or any pits that we can easily fall into. So that Mad Monster Mansion cutscene was the only one we can warp into. But we can still dupe notes from other levels into TTC and we're about to see that. So instead of dying in the cutscene of Stop and Swap, I'm instead going to die before the cutscene starts with Stop and Swap. And as we saw before with the Clanker's Witch Switch, that's going to sort of store that cutscene until we go to the cutscene room. So what we need to do here is keep this crab around, because this crab is going to kill us after we enter the code, just because there's not quite enough time to make it to the door of the sandcastle before the game over cutscene fades out. I had to do this on emulator with hacks, but in theory this should be possible on Xbox. It's just really hard to get the timing. Let's have a look. So I'm entering this stop and swap code here, and I'm going to wait for the crab to sort of be back here, and then we're going to trigger a game over. You'd normally have the pause screen up to trigger that game over on Xbox. So then Banjo dies before the cutscene can really start, and we get back to the start of TTC. Nothing unusual happens here, until we go to Rusty Bucket Bay. So let's see what that looks like, we're just going to head over to Rusty Bucket Bay, and I'm going to make sure that I collect one note, so we'll grab that from the kitchen here. 
I want to grab one note just to show you that these notes are going to transfer across. So there we go. Now the stop and swap cutscene is in this room I'm about to go into here, just with this window. And there we go. It's going to play and send me back to TTC. I'll be bringing that one note that I collected back into TTC. So now if I got all 100 here, I could end up with 101. If I got all 100 in Rusty Bucket Bay, I could end up with 200 in total for TTC. Plus the 100 that I already got in Rusty Bucket Bay, meaning I get 300 notes while only having to collect 200 notes. Really good stuff. So um, part of the limitations of this are A, you need to set up the pause, and B, you need to set up the cauldron stuff. But also, you can't watch any cutscenes as you're going to Rusty Bucket Bay, because that'll cancel off the uh, stop and swap cutscene. So that means that you can't open Rusty Bucket Bay during this sequence. You'd either have to open Rusty Bucket Bay beforehand, or just use the cheat code to open Rusty Bucket Bay. So that's something to keep in mind if you're doing this glitch. And when we see the speedrun route of this later, we're not going to do this with Rusty Bucket Bay, but we'll basically do the same thing with Frazizi Peak. Now we're going to step through a potential route of any percent with cheats. Just be aware that if you're looking for this speedrun, like if you're googling it or something, it'll normally be called Sandcastle Percent. And that just basically means any percent with cheats are allowed. So let's have a look at the route. We're going to start off by doing DDA, and that'll put us in Rusty Bucket Bay. And we collect all 100 notes in Rusty Bucket Bay. Uh, then we walk all the way back to the start of the game and go to Mumbo's Mountain. We collect 100 notes there. The reason Mumbo's is so good is because A, it takes 1 G to open, and B, the 100 notes are really quick to get. Um, you may not be able to get all 100 though because the uh, termite tower will cause you some issues. So we'll have to tweak these numbers a bit, but this is the general idea of it. On your way down to Mumbo's Mountain, you're going to hit these two blue cauldrons, and you're going to start the cauldron cutscene glitch where Banjo will be spawning in all the cutscenes. That's just to set up something for later, and it persists until you go into another cauldron cutscene. What we're also going to do down here is look at the Lair intro cutscene to set up the correct game over sequence for later. Next thing we're going to do is head into Clankers and grab 60 notes, although that'll probably be a bit more than 60, and then we're going to head down to TTC. The key thing here is you want at least 260 notes. So in TTC, we're going to do the code to get the ice key in for ZZ Peak. So we're going to do that bit of the code there, and it'll spawn the ice key in. But we're going to die just before we enter that code. So what that's going to do is that's going to queue up the cutscene for the ice key to warp us back to TTC, but we're not going to watch that cutscene yet. So whenever we step into Waz's cave, it's going to warp us back to TTC. So then we just walk all the way up through the lair until we get to Frazizi Peak, and that's why you needed the 260 notes before, because there's a note door blocking you to get into Frazizi Peak. You could bypass that restriction using the pink cauldron, but we're not going to do that here. In Frazizi Peak, you're going to collect 100 notes, and then you're going to enter Waz's Cave. As soon as you enter Waz's Cave, the Ice Key cutscene will play, and that warps Banjo back into the Sandcastle. You bring 100 notes back into TTC using this note duping glitch, and that means that you can get 200 notes in TTC. So that's the 100 notes you collected in FP, plus the 100 you're going to collect in TTC. Then, from TTC, we do that Mad Monster Mansion glitch that we saw before, and we warp into that cutscene, so a little bit different to what we did for FP. So once we do that, it's the egg cutscene that we're going to be warping into. We warp into Mad Monster Mansion, and we go and get another 50 notes. So we've already got the 200 notes in our hand from FP and TTC. We're going to get another 50 on top of that. Now, you might be wondering, why don't I just get 300 notes here? Because I could get all 100 in MMM. And the answer is, you can't get any more than 255 notes as a note score. Um, for technical reasons, that's because they just use a single byte to store your note score. So basically, there's just no space to have any more than 255. But 250 is what we want here, because as you can see down the bottom, our total is now 810. And that's how many notes we need to beat the game. The 810 note door is a hard cap that we don't have a skip for in RTA speedruns yet, and it's pretty much the bottleneck of all speedruns in this game. So, uh, you might be wondering, what about Wazza? So, if we want to go into Wazza's cave, we need to kind of get rid of Wazza who's in the way. And that requires transforming into the Warus and going through this whole big thing where it gives you a jiggy and then you'd have to turn back into Banjo, otherwise you'd be the Warus back in TTC and it's just a mess. Well, it turns out that the DDA glitch actually despawns Wazza for some reason. Now, I'm pretty sure it's because this same file is used for the end of game stop and swap cutscenes and that needed Wazza gone for Banjo to walk into the cave. 
So it's a bit of a weird thing with DDA, and that's the only thing that's kind of different and weird about the DDA file. And it turns out that means you can't use DDA to do a 100% speedrun, because you can't get that was a jiggy. You can only get 99 out of 100 in the game. Pretty weird stuff. But that's what the route would look like for a Sandcastle% percent speedrun. And you might actually notice that although I'm going to have 810 nodes by the end of it, I only collected 510 nodes because 300 of those nodes were duplicated. So as far as I know, the stop and swap cutscenes are the only way to transfer and dupe notes across levels. I have tried something with the picture questions in this game since it's the only cutscenes I can think of which will show you into a level without being in that level. Unfortunately, I can't seem to get control of Banjo in a picture question no matter how hard I've tried. Although I have had some cool effects like storing the text of Grunty saying where have you been into the game over in the intro cutscene. Nothing too much interesting has happened with this, but I think this is probably the most potential for it to get more game breaking without having to use any sandcastle cheats. So if you hit exit game here, you don't really gain control of Banjo. In fact, in most of these, Banjo hasn't even spawned in, but you can't get this cold effect. I think this has some potential, but I haven't been able to get anything out of it quite yet. So I want to talk about some limitations of this pause glitch. So as I've mentioned before, the cauldrons are usually required to set it up, meaning if you're doing this from a fresh file, you have to get up to a complete pair of cauldrons before you can do anything interesting. There's also only two known spots to set up the pause glitch, and that's the water draining in TTC and the water draining in Gobi's Valley. But I'm confident we'll be able to find some more of those spots with enough looking. Um, there's also limited movement and no moves in cutscenes, so you can't jump, you can't use attacks and you don't get much time in the cutscene, it's basically just when it's fading out. The other thing is, sometimes you do get kicked out of this pause menu. If you go into Spire Mountain and leave it like this, you won't get the pause menu in that next room that you go into, and it's basically gone forever. This can even happen with something as simple as getting a picture question of Spire Mountain Furnace Fun. So it's a bit weird that it's programmed like that, but it stops us from doing some really useful stuff, like we could have played with the bottles bonus puzzles and this pause glitch if we could bring the pause into Banjo's house, but we can't. And uh, there's some other factors like the pause menu can go away when you're on the file select screen, because otherwise we could bring the pause glitch into a new file. Uh, the other factor with this glitch is it's really hard to do any testing on Xbox. Now luckily Isotage set me up with this game over trigger on the N64 emulator, but you can't be 100% sure that everything N64 is going to match everything Xbox. So this is still really difficult to test. I'm going to talk about some potential uses of this glitch soon, so I'd encourage people to try and have a look into it themselves, because at this point we need as many people testing as possible, just because of how long it takes to test anything on Xbox. Now the first really, really exciting potential application would be 810 skip. So the 810 note door is in this final room and we have no known way to get past it without Taz tools. Um, there's also door of Grunty in this room and that's difficult to get past. You can get past it on N64, but not on Xbox without that corruption glitch we saw before. Um, behind these two doors is Dingpot here, uh, which is kind of your barrier to entering the final boss. If you jump into Dingpot, it will take you up to Grunty, and that sort of brings you to the end of the game. So if we can find any way to get here, that's going to cut the run down a lot. Like, even more than in half, it's going to cut it down to barely any time at all. Now, the best lead we have on getting to Dingpot and past the 810 door is actually this cauldron over here. Uh, when you do the cauldron cutscene, it always puts Banjo in the same spot during that cutscene, and we saw that before with the pink cauldron with RBB early. Now it turns out that if you get the other cauldron in that pair over there and have a look at this room during the cutscene, it puts Banjo right here, like right in front of Dingpot. Which means that if you could get enough movement in that cutscene and maybe a jump into Dingpot or something like that, you could, in theory, jump into Dingpot and beat the game. Now, if Banjo can only walk, then I'm restricted to this area. Now it looks like there's no ground here, but there is actually floor, it's just not visually loaded in and there's pretty much nothing you could do in this area. Uh, potentially, if we could get Banjo to die, something interesting might happen, but really what we'd want is to jump into Dingpot. And you can sort of see that no matter what I do here, I can't get into Dingpot without getting a jump. And even if I could, once you jump into Dingpot, it takes a little while for that animation to play and for you to actually go into the loading zone. 
But if we could extend that time and get a jump, you never know, it could happen. I'll demonstrate what I mean here and I've got the sound on on purpose. I'm going to warp into that cutscene and gain right. control. And then you'll be able to hear Dingpot in that. You will also hear the text start up for me talking to Dingpot. That has a lot of potential, but we can't do anything with it quite yet. Now I'll just rattle off the other few places where this glitch could go. Uh, one big potential application is this corruption stuff. Uh, not many people have even got any kind of corruption yet, but if you could get it on Door of Grunty, that would save a whole bunch of time in a speed run. Um, there's a few other things, like for example, if we could spawn Waza in Frazizi Peak, then this could apply to 100%, because we could do DDA and have Waza spawned, uh, which would save a lot of time in 100%, because you get to start in Rusty Bucket Bay with all the moves. Uh, if we could find any other ways to get into levels early using this glitch, that would be great. So currently we have Rusty Bucket Bay and Mad Monster Mansion, but something like Click Lock Wood would be perfect. We'd also be looking for Water Skip uh, in any categories that don't use Demo D Sync Adventure. Um, and by Water Level Skip, I mean skipping, turning into the pumpkin, and raising the water level near Mad Monster Mansion. Uh, there's also a lot of potential with picture questions in Furnace Fun, as I mentioned before. And I'm hoping we can find a way to warp between levels without having to use the stop and swap cutscenes. Purely just because uh, using the swap, stop and swap cutscenes is considered a cheat. We could also look at doing more skips with level opening cutscenes like Bubble Gloop Swamp. Skipping all the navigation to actually walk over here would save a lot of time. And there's also a lot more to be done with the end of game cutscene, seeing if we can break out of any of those stop and swap pictures or anything like that. So that's going to be all for this video. Uh, it's really exciting times, and if you have any interest in banjo or glitch hunting or both, I'd really encourage you to pick this up and give it a go. It's early days for this glitch and I'm sure we'll just keep finding more and more. I want to give a huge shout out to uh, Trep and TSR for originally finding this glitch and also Isotardish for programming up some stuff to help me do testing a lot faster. I also want to shout out everyone who was in my chat stream while I was trying to find stuff with this glitch. It was a huge slog and it uh, definitely kept me sane through all that glitch hunting. And a shout out to the Banjo community in general for being so supportive with this stuff. Um, if you liked this content, I have more explanation videos on my channel and a whole lot of stuff around Banjo. Also, a subscription is always appreciated if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see what happens with this glitch in the future.